Hey, Liam Ward here at LearnTheHarmonica.com. Today I'm talking about problems that you might be having with learning to overblow. I'm going to run through the top five things that come up all the time with my students online and I'm going to try and help point you in the right direction for how to overcome those problems as well. So the first problem that comes up a lot is bad bending technique. Now in theory you could learn to overblow without being able to bend first but it really really helps make it more accessible and you're more likely to be in a place where overblows are going to work for you if you've learned to draw bend and to blow bend first. So draw bending is on holes one to six you know that kind of that sort of sound and then blow bends up the top end those sorts of sounds. This is a diatonic harmonica in the key of C. I'm using a Hohner Golden Melody today. So if you're not able to get those bends, control them, hold them, use them in your playing, then getting the overblow is going to be difficult because it's much easier to play an overblow if you can transfer the techniques, the control that you have with your mouth and your tongue and the airflow over to the overblow technique, whereas learning from scratch without that is more difficult. Now, I don't want this video to be about bending technique, but I have other videos on YouTube about draw bending and about blow bending. So, if that's your problem, if you're not got that to begin with, then check out the links in the description to find out more about bending. The next problem that comes up quite a lot is not being sure whether you are getting the overblow. So you can hit this brick wall of you sort of think you're getting it, you're not really sure, you're not sure if you're getting the right note. And the solution to this, the easiest way to get around this, is to use reference notes. So what I mean is to use some other instrument or some other piece of equipment that you can compare the note you're getting with that note. So the easiest way with harmonica is to get a different harmonica where the overblow note is available naturally. So on a C diatonic harmonica, the six overblow, the note should be a B flat. So if you take a B flat harmonica, then you can play the seven blow, the normal blow note, and your overblow on six should sound similar. So if you're playing that sort of sound, now whether the tone sounds like that or not, my tone wasn't great, your tone might be better, is, is you know irrelevant in this context. But that note, if I then play a B flat, seven blow, you can hear it similar. Overblows tend to come out a bit flat, so it's kind of a bit flat of that B flat. So B flat slight, slightly extra flat, uh, but you can hear they're similar. So I know that that's the overblow. Now the different holes, you're going to need a different reference note. You could also use a tuner, a chromatic tuner, that will tell you on on a screen in front of you kind of where you are in terms of the notes. But you're going to need to know what the notes are on the harmonica. So you can use a diagram, a chart of, of all different um, keys of harmonica to help you with that. They're all over the internet. Um, if I've got one to link, I'm trying to think if I've got uh, one uh, freely available on the site, then I'll put it in the description. If I don't put one in the description, remind me in the comments and I'll try and add one to the site somewhere. Because you need to know what reference point you're looking for in order to check it. The other way you can use a reference point is by checking the note an octave below. So the six overblow is the octave up from the three draw half step bend. So if you play two draw and then three draw half step bend, it's that minor third, that blue third. And then if you play six blow in the overblow, it should sound like that moved an octave up. there or thereabouts. That second point leads on to my third big problem, which is, put simply, playing the wrong hole. 
Now, you'd be amazed how often people think they've got an overblow when really what they're doing is bending whole seven blow. So, so you're just playing seven blow and kind of getting that micro bend, that blow bend that just kind of moves a little bit and you think, oh, I've got an overblow. Now, remember that an overblow actually chokes the blow reed and then this higher tone, this higher note pops out. So if you're not hearing a higher note than the natural kind of blow note, it's not an overblow. So remember on hole six, you've got da, da. it's not going da, kind of going downwards. So it's kind of crucially different from a bend in that regard. Again, to make sure you're on the right hole, you can use a tuner or a reference point. The natural note for six blow is a G note. So, so that's what you should be hearing before you attempt the six overblow. Again, different holes, you need to know the uh, natural note for those holes. I know that sounds like a really obvious rookie error, but uh, believe me, it happens all the time that people are one hole off, even experienced players. So make sure that's not happening for you. The fourth problem that comes up a lot is conflicting sounds. Now, this means that you're kind of halfway there to getting the overblow, but you've not properly choked the blow reed. So a part of the process when overblowing is to stop that blow reed from vibrating as normal so that you can vibrate the draw reed at a higher pitch than normal. So you're still blowing or breathing out, but the draw reed is kind of doing the work for you. Now if you've got kind of conflicting sounds of almost kind of two notes at once, then that's because the blow reed hasn't properly choked, hasn't properly stopped. So, you need to go back to the drawing board with your technique and work on the initial process of choking that reed. So, I think of it almost like trying to blow bend that six blow. And it will kind of go a little bit, but then if you keep trying to take it further, you can get the note to stop playing altogether. So you, you go, you imagine that you're bending it further and further, at some point it stops. Now that's, that's not because I've stopped breathing out, it's because I've choked that reed. And if I go further, I can get the overblow to pop out. If I don't do that process properly, if I don't properly choke that reed, then I might get conflicting sort of sounds. Okay, so that's kind of it's like the, the blow note and the overblow wanting to come through, but I haven't properly choked that uh, blow reed to begin with. The other thing you can do to help avoid that is to work on your blow bends. So the higher blow bends. That control needed to play those notes well will really help with the overblow choking process. And the other really simple thing that's sometimes a problem with conflicting sounds is just losing your basic mouth shape as you attempt the overblow. So if you were to let one of the adjacent blow notes play at the same time, again, you'll get a conflicted sort of sound. You know, where I'm hearing, in that case, the seven blow in addition to the six blow, which Again, even if you're an experienced player, when you're trying a new technique, sometimes your foundational techniques can suffer somewhat because you're losing your concentration on those. So make sure you're very focused on your basic techniques as a foundation for these more advanced techniques on top. The last problem that I want to talk about is squealing sort of sounds. Now, 
This harp probably won't do this for me because it's a pretty good harp for overblowing. But if you're playing a Liosca harmonica, they're pretty notorious for that squealing sound. And other harps as well sometimes will give sort of squealing sound. It's known as torsional vibration. It's where the reed isn't vibrating in a uniform way. And it gives these kind of strange kind of squeals as you're trying to get the note to go. Perhaps if I try uh, an overdraw, which I haven't set this up for at all, we might get some squeals. A little bit of a squeal there, I don't know if it's too high for the mic to pick up. Yeah, there's some squealing going on. Now, when it gets to that point, you can just buy a different harmonica. There are harmonicas that are especially well set up for overblowing and overdrawing. Uh, custom harmonicas and higher end expensive harmonicas uh, tend to be set up for those techniques. But there are some things you can do to set up your harmonica to play overblows easier and to avoid some of those squealing sounds. Now it's beyond the scope of this video. There are other videos by great harmonica customizers and harmonica um, makers and overblow players on YouTube. Um, remind me if I forget, I'll put some links uh, to their channels in the, the uh, description beneath the video. But I do talk about these techniques in my premium course, Intro to Overblowing, and that's included in the free trial of my harmonica school. So do check the link to that in the description if you want to learn more about setting up the instrument, making sure that it's going to be easier for you. So I hope these tips have helped you with any problems you're having with overblows. Let me know what you think in the comments and please click like on this video if you've enjoyed it. That helps YouTube to know to share it with more people who might enjoy it as well. I put out free harmonic lessons every single week. So if you want to get those then subscribe to the channel and click the bell. I'll be back soon with another lesson. Until then, enjoy your practice. Cheers.